Welcome to Momentum Live. I have Ipsita Paul here, veteran triple threat performer. And uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're right here in your home. And happy belated birthday. Thank you. Yeah, it's airy season. And we've got a lot to talk about. And this is a beautiful space, thank I you. have to say. Um, so thank you for joining us because we're going to talk about triple threat and owning your voice. And for those of you who don't know what triple threat is in performing arts, it is? Um, actor, singer, dancer. Yes, yeah. actor, singer, dancer. And doing all three... Uh, and not showing that you're losing your breath, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. So, Ipsita, I just want to share with them a little bit of your work, because you've been performing since what year, really? Um, since I was, well, I've been performing since I was two years old, um, dancing. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. I, I would say I'm primarily a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, and then, well, an actor, by trade um, but uh, yeah primarily a dancer and um, and then I, I guess singing kind of fell into my lap once I started musical theater yes uh, at the age of like 18 19 right and you yeah. were on Broadway yes which is like for me the ultimate I think that's amazing and you were nominated for an NAACP award for your performance on contact yes which is Wow, so that's that's so great to have that recognition, and then from there you transition to being on screen. So yep. one of your recent credits is being on the Handmaid's Tale, right? Yep. And uh, and then now you're focusing more so on on voiceover work. Right? Yes, yes, which I absolutely love, um, and it's kind of interesting because I feel like the, um, the singing and voice work has always been a challenge for me. My voice has always been very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, I, when you're when you're dancing at, um, at any sort of audition at a call and you feel like you're just dancing for your life and then you have to run in and sing I feel like that's where I was always um, I was always out of breath I didn't know how to control my voice and now that's what I do the most right yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting how that that transitions um, especially because dancers are very passionate but we, we express it through our movement and we feel like people, and you really do connect that the audience can read the emotion coming out without saying anything. Yeah, and, uh, and we, also, we also use our breath very differently. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'm, I'm always breathing like really sort of high. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, very, that was very challenging for me. For, right. for many years. Because vocalists don't, it's a different kind of breath. Yeah, it's so low. So how do you adjust that? Like, well, I didn't. Mm. I didn't for the longest time, which is where the challenge always was. Um, and I feel like I didn't learn that until I actually left. <laughs> until, oh, I, right. until I actually left musical theater. Um, it, that's when I really, and I started doing you know, voice work a lot more. That's where I really learned how to manipulate my voice. And so <clears throat> some of the warm-ups for voice work, did you do that as a dancer when you were on stage? Or was it more like... You, did, you focused more on the physical warm-up for dance and then just did like... Warm -up. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. Okay. Uh, honestly, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't even think about it. Like I was always, because I was trained as a dancer, mm -hmm. um, and I felt like everyone was like light years ahead of me. Yeah. Um, and I had just sort of fallen into musical theater, which was such a blessing, but... I wish I could I, say that. I, <laughs> I was traveling to Broadway and well, I had to learn. No, but, but that's, that, that, that's kind yeah. of how it felt. And yes, so it was yeah. sort of like, I, I was just like playing catch up. Right, yeah. Um, and so when I would go in for, for coachings, I felt like in that moment, I was, I was really concentrating on the singing and I was doing a good job in that moment. But then when I was trying to combine the two, it was like I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to connect the two together. It's right. like I had to either do the dancing mm -hmm. or do the singing. And so when I was trying to do the two of them together, I always reverted back to what I knew right. or what my body understood, which was the dancing. Right. And so I was always doing that, that short, shallow breath, right. which I had to... I had to do that, so I so my singing was compromised. Right, so it was more like a heavy voice yes. as opposed to getting into your diaphragm. Yes. And so how did that also translate to nerves? Because if you're, if you're oh. shallow breathing and you're heady, 
Um, did you feel grounded on stage or uh, a different kind of, you were just going, ah, like, you know, no one can tell, but you know, like, well, how that would be for certain shows. On stage, I mean, once I had the job, on, on stage, I, once I was able to relax, I feel like it, it didn't affect me too much, but in auditions, it affected me a lot. Yeah. Um, during the dance calls, I was always fine, um, and then when I had to go in to sing, and I was still, like, you know, if I was the first one to be called in to sing, right. I, I was a mess. You know, oh, man. if I didn't have the time yeah. to sort right. of like really, yeah. you know, relax before I went in to, to sing. And song selection, like what songs would you generally pick? Like, did you know your range? Like, because at that time you're like, I don't know, you know, some dancers will bring in happy birthday for shoot music if they were <laughs> not prepared. Like, it's a sad story. But like, what would you Well, my, my coaches w would help me pick songs, but here here is the catch is that yeah. when when I would go in to, you know, for, for my vocal coachings, I was, I hadn't been dancing for an hour or two beforehand. Right. Yes. So, oh, you're right. so you're I right. was relaxed yes. and, yeah. um, you know, it would be like, Oh, well you have like a strong chest voice. So let's do this for like your up tempo. Let's do this for your, you know, for your ballad. So I think I had the right songs for my, for my voice, mm -hmm. but not after I'd been like, Dancing you know, for hours. yeah, dancing for for a couple of hours. So it's because I didn't know what I didn't know how to prepare myself after I'd been dancing or breathing a certain way and how to manipulate my voice and. Do you right. know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I've been to a few bomb like bomb in a bad way. Auditions. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm going through for musical theater. Yeah. Um, but if yeah. I had a callback. Yeah. If, if I had a callback yeah. and I could just and I could just be like like chill, then yeah. it was fine. But usually they they cut you, cut you, cut you, and then they're like ladies. That, yeah, and exactly. Then you're off to the piano. You got five minutes. Okay, get ready. Get your sheet music. Let's go. And you're usually panicking in the exactly. bathroom, trying to like stop sweating and putting on your lip gloss. And I, it's it yeah. It was. Yeah, and they were good. So what was your mindset? You had to do like a mindset shift because you're like, oh shoot, I'm, I'm making it, I'm progressing through this audition. Yeah. And there's a lot of emotion because you want to get the contract, right? So how did you do it? Like, what did you, like, you don't know, like you just jump and then you just did your sheet music and you're like, ugh. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, depending on what audition it was for, it, I was almost always singing like, I'm pretty sure I had the same up-tempo song for like the entire time I was in New York. <laughs> yes. Just because switching things up for me was like never, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to be like pretty solid in what I was doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what my mindset really was at that point. It was just like, just, just, get, just get through and yeah, I, 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 I will say that I was a lot better with like my up-tempo than I was with, with my ballad because anything right. that required control, right. um, you know, was not, was not good after I'd been dancing like, yeah, mm -hmm. dancing my tits off. No. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. And then also with ballads, you have to actually embody the lyrics. I mean, even with the up-tempo because you have to sell the character, right? Yes. Like, did you find that was a shift to being like, okay, this is the character that, you know, you can see that. That actually made it easier. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. So if I was like, if I was like, a, you know, my, my up tempo was like, it was, it, it was fun. If I could be like cheeky and mm -hmm. I felt like that made it easier for me right. rather than, you know, uh, yeah, no, the, the, uh, forlorn. Yeah. No. Mm -mm. Are there, <laughs> no, are there certain characters where you're like, you know, like Beyonce has her Sasha Fierce. Yes. So your alter ego when you get to auditions is mm -hmm. who? Like who is your character when you're like, Ipsy is on and she's walking into the room? Um, I feel like it's like, it's like a boxer. It's like a fighter. It's yeah. like a, yes. Yeah. Which is funny because I feel like now I'm like, cause I, cause I have like the studio. I feel like now I'm like putting that on to like, I'm putting that on to like the kids, right? You know, like like that's who I sort of, that's what I want like the kids to be portraying all the time. Yeah, you want them to attack. Yes, everything. Right, and be completely focused, right? Yes. Because when under stress, it actually narrows it narrows you down. If you're yeah. in your thoughts, then you're not using stress to your advantage. Exactly. You need stress to get to turn you on. If you're not stressed enough, then you're lazy. 
Yes. Well, and yeah. And I tell them, I'm like, well, what happens if you're like, if you're in the ring mm -hmm. and you're not focused, you get knocked out. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not vigilant enough to anticipate your opponent's moves, yes, you're going to get knocked out. Exactly. So, and then the opponent's going to see how you're standing, yes. right? When, when you go in the ring. So if you're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so annoying. Like, oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so let's talk about, okay, so because you have this experience and you're a mom of two and your, mm. your kids dance or perform, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, my, my daughter's, um, in competitive gymnastics yes. and, um, and my son's, and my son dances. And, yeah. yeah. So they're in there. Yeah. And so how, like, so as a mom and then as a studio owner, mm -hmm. as a dance educator, you know, you observe things and you have a certain standard. How would you like, you know, how do you tie the, the connection between your experience and developing your professionalism and then what you want to instill in this new generation of dancers? Um, well, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm old school. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my, my dance teacher, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Harvey. Hi, Mrs. Harvey. Yeah, uh, <laughs> hope you're watching. Mm -hmm. Um, she was, or she is, um, it's very, very old school. So fun, but mm -hmm. old school. Yeah. Um, and, but she completely, I feel like I have the work ethic that I have right. because of her. Yeah. I have the love of dance because I have this love of dance because of her. Right. Well, and my parents. Right. Um, it, I try and, um, I try and instill that in my students. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, why come if, you don't why come to class if you don't if you don't have if you don't want to be there right you know I, it doesn't matter if you're doing competitive or or rec mm -hmm. i just feel like if you've made a commitment then just come and be present for the for the time that you're there right and then someone would some would argue say oh well kids they they can't be present what i know uh, no so how do you Right. So what would you say to that? It's like, oh, well, kids can't be present. They're on their phones. They're always on their phones. They can't be present. I think that kids, I think that whatever you expect of them, yeah. they will deliver that. Right. So if you expect nothing of them, yeah. they will give you nothing. Right. And if you expect more of them, that is exactly what they will give you. Like yeah. even with like the littlest kids at our studio, yeah. when you speak to them like babies, they mm -hmm. act like babies. Yes. When you speak to them, like just like how you and I are speaking right, right. now, yeah. they, they react completely differently. Yeah. And they give you exactly what, what, you, what you expect or, exactly. or what you'd want. It's and they actually, they actually deliver so much more. Yeah, because it, it's, it's potential, right? And, and, yeah. they, and, and, and they want to. They want to please. They want to, they want to show you. Yeah, people but they're so proud of themselves. It's yeah. not even really about pleasing us. They're, right. they're like proud of themselves for doing it. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah. And if, especially, too, if you see transformation, um, you know, and things like exams or performances, yep. extra performances outside of recital, it gives them that opportunity to say, that was scary, but we did it. Yeah. You know, we finished it. We did it. And this is... This Listen, is yeah. the parent, like, like, from what I've seen, yeah. it's almost like the kids are always so willing to, like, raise the bar for themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that we as parents, we're always more afraid. Right. Yeah. We're always more afraid yeah. because we've been through things and we've made mistakes or we've been through things that are, have been scary for us right. and we think it's going to be scary for the kids, but it's not scary for them. No. Yeah. This it's, is the time. Yeah. It's, it's not scary for them. Like they're just like, you know, horses at the gate that are ready to like, just go. Right. Yeah. You know? So I think that we should, we should be willing to like, just let them go. Right. You can always, you can always, you know, bring them back. Right. Yeah. You know, but they're, they're ready to go. And so what would you also say for, for kids and even like parents, and, and this is even not just for dancing, but just performance, whether it be even sports or whatever, because mm -hmm. I, I have many conversations like this in my office too, with parents and children who want to get to the end point, but don't want to do the steps to, to get there. Like they rely 100% on the teacher to warm them up 
to condition them, to get them over injury, and learn the choreo, oh. and I, them yeah. and put their makeup. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I would just so what say. What would you say? Like, what would you say to that? Where the, like, how do we bridge that? Because an expectation is also lack of communication, right? So, how do we, you know, what would be. I would just say it doesn't work that way. Right. And I would say that you're probably setting not only yourself up, mm -hmm. but your children up for like, like you're not, you're, you're not helping them. Right. You know, um, it's, I mean, they're going to have to do the work, right. Um, especially with skills and all that stuff. Like it takes, it takes years and years and years to get somewhere. I think that with, we have so much information coming our way now, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Because now we can we can see we can see what is actually out there. Right. But at the same time, you know, we see things and we think that it's it's instantly available, but also instantly attainable. Yes. Yeah. So the yeah. thing is, is that it's not instantly attainable. What we don't see is like the hours, the years that go into that, the blood, right. sweat, and tears yes. that go into that, yeah. the yeah. injuries that happen, right. the, um, like the time that is put into all of that and the fire that you have to have in your belly to actually mm -hmm. want that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You may see something and think, I want that, Yeah. but you want it right now. Yeah. But do you want it when you have to be at the studio, I don't know, 25 hours a week? Yeah. When you may have multiple injuries, mm -hmm. when you are not going to be able to go to birthday parties or sleepovers or, you know, um, you know you're, you're going to have dinners away from your family. Mm -hmm. or when, I mean, it, it is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But when people really love it, then yeah. that's what you do. People do it for hockey. People do oh, it yeah. for... People do it for, for skiing. People do right. it for all, all mm -hmm. types of different things. You just have to decide whether that is what you want it for. Listen, you need to learn how to do your own bun. Oh, yes. You need yes. to learn how to do your own bun. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and as you get older, I mean, this is not for like the little, little ones, but yeah, as yeah. you get older, you have to learn how to do your own makeup, put on your own lashes, yes, you yeah. know, like all of this stuff. Um, it, this is up to you and you have to take care of your body and... Um, yeah. because there is also going to be like, like physio and, uh, and Dr. <laughs> Blessel <laughs> who, do, who takes care of my body <laughs> still, yeah. you know? So, I mean, and that's true because when you become a professional, like you show up way before your call time, Yeah, you don't show up at your call time and you uh, warm yourself up. If you show up at the time that you're supposed to be there, yeah. you're late. You're late, girl. You're late. And boys. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, like, yeah. like I always say, like, if 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 you're supposed to be there, let's just say, if they say it starts at four and you walk in at four, you're late. Oh, you're done too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not ready. You're no, not, thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. And so that's the thing is that you know being able to warm yourself up, that's on your own. Mm -hmm. like, no one's gonna hold your hand and do that. And there are there are young dancers like we started working professionally in our early 20s mm -hmm. right and so with these ones who are starting when they're like kids yeah so this is you know so this is going to be like years it, it takes a toll on your body mm -hmm. so you have to really take care of it like mm -hmm. you've only got one right, right. yeah yeah you don't want to be replacing parts of your body you know at the age of 25 I, and I've seen some already. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, I have, yeah. I have friends that have replaced knees and hips and yeah. all that stuff that, you know, you don't, you don't want to be doing that, you know, early, early on yeah. in life. Um, but yeah, like I, I say to, to my students mm -hmm. that you ha you have like your toolbox, right? right? <clears throat> and I've given you the tools with each class, with each workshop, with each intensive, you get more more tools that right. you put into your toolbox. I can't do it for you though. Yeah. Right? right? It's up to you to actually fill that toolbox and with each other, you know, whatever studio you go on to next or whatever class or convention or competition you go to, you decide which tools that you're going to take out and use. Yeah. Right? But they have to do the work. Yes, they have to do the work. You know, nobody can do the work for you. 
There's always going to be someone better. Always. Yeah. Always. But mm. you can always work the hardest. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's so interesting too. Cause with dance, it's a lot of people don't realize that it's casting. It is. And, uh, I, like, I remember not being cast because of a certain, I'm not a certain height. Like there's one of the uh, triple threats that I'm working now, uh, working with, and she got cut because she was one inch too short. She was on the short list and I was like, yeah, I guess so. I guess, you know, and it, it sucks because sometimes too with, with the young dancers, you know, we're focusing on the training, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day with professional work, it's height, it's look, it's well yeah i mean it could be, you know, it, it could be the wind blew the other way and you know it's yeah. like so, someone doesn't like the way you look or you remind them of you know their ex-girlfriend or whatever oh, yeah. it could be anything <laughs> yeah you, you know yeah. but uh, i mean i used to take stuff like that like really to heart because mm -hmm. when when you love it mm -hmm. and and you're passionate about it it can be it can be really hurtful like, like you think i'm not a good enough dancer right. yeah it it has nothing to really do with that you know yeah it's it because it is you have to fit into a puzzle right yeah especially if you're going into an existing show or whatever it is yeah like sometimes you're just filling a spot yes yeah so it's you know you have you have to fit into a puzzle right and you know and some people just have that marketing like whatever is trendy at the time yep yeah. is what's especially kind of if you're doing commercial work yeah right yeah like you, like you you have to have like that trendy look or whatever it is and if you don't, then if you're, you know, if, if you're doing company work, then it's something different. Right. Yeah. 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 Very different. So then transitioning from stage work to on set and then now voice work where you're in a booth <sighs> and you don't have to worry about what you look like, but no. it's your voice. Yeah. So how do you get into that mindset now of like, you know, if they say, okay, this is the character or this is the product. Yeah. Because now they don't have to look at your face. So you've no. got to really animate your voice. Yeah. And translate it so that the consumer, whoever is viewing it, yeah. will be convinced that so and so is behind and, and they visualize what your voice is. So that's a completely different Yeah. I you know. Um I feel like when when I first came back to Toronto, I was I was trying to came uh, I was trying to get into voice work. Um and it was and, and it was it was difficult mm -hmm. to get into voice work and then um and then it just kind of happened. I think my first job was like a, a McDonald's radio spot. Um, but it's, I absolutely love it. Depending on whatever product it is, mm -hmm. um, I like to sort of switch it up. But I mean, I always, look, you know, you, you look at the breakdowns and you just see like, you know, what it is they're looking for. I love beauty reads. So yeah. can you give us an example? Um, <laughs> gosh, you don't even this spot. <laughs> Let's say we were selling... I don't know. Well, I mean, beauty reads are, you know, they're, they're a little more, uh, they're a little bit softer and um, a little bit quieter and sexier. You know? I'll I buy that. Yeah, but <laughs> I, buy I just really like it because it's, it, I don't know, it's just, a, they're just a little bit smoother. Yeah. You know? A little smooth jazz. It is smooth yeah. jazz. Yeah. Did you ever break out laughing though? Oh, well, like once you're in the all zone, the time. You're in the zone. I, I do, feel like I would laugh, like I would do it, and then I'd probably. Well, I shouldn't. Well, not but like laugh, not literally, literally laughing, laughing at the spots, but yeah, thing. not literally laughing at the spots. But I mean, I do these like Rexall spots with like with like two people that have become like friends of mine now, okay, and yeah. so we have like a camaraderie, and it's there. I mean, it's super fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're always laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We're always laughing. Yeah. So how, what would advice would you give to young artists who want to take it? And you know, sustainability is really all about, you know, changing gears and, and where you, you know, acknowledging where you are in the season. Like how would, like, how would you, like what advice would you give to people who say, you know, I want to make this for the long haul. I don't know what it would look like 10 or 20 years, but I just want to perform. I like, think it's exactly be? what you said, acknowledging where you are. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that when I first started in the business, I was just like, I'm going to be a star. Like right. I was like Bette Midler, well, yeah, you know what you I mean? In beaches. Yeah. Like, it was like, I, <laughs> <laughs> you got your tap shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, at some point you, there's like a shift and you realize that you may, you know, people change 
and you aren't the same person that you were a year ago, mm -hmm. you know, than the same person you were a year before that. Yeah. And so you kind of like move on. And I was like, well, this isn't necessarily making me happy anymore. Right. Um, so, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to make, I, I absolutely love the arts. I love dancing. I love musical theater. Um, I love everything that sort of encompasses this business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm going to move on to film and, you know, film and TV. And when I started to do that, I was like, I like this. <laughs> I like it. I have to say, I, I like doing commercial work more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Maybe just because it's like sort of like fast and dirty. It's short. It's short. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's sort of great for my life yes. right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, and then from there, it was the same thing. It was just like, I, you know, I feel like I sort of reinvent myself every quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, I just can't sit put for too long. Right, which is the creative thing. Yeah, yeah. you don't. Like I feel saying. like it's like the, it's like the Madonna in me. I'm like, you know, like yeah. burn everything down and then come back up, and then yes. burn everything down and then sort of like, you know, just to sort of like reinvent yourself, and mm -hmm. you know, and right now I'm sort of like in like the voice season where it's like I just love doing that right now. Right, you know. The, the same thing with the studio. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, like I sort of like built the studio and now I'm just like, oh, burn it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, like, oh, bless my husband. He's just like, he's like, what is happening? But, you know, it's... You I have short, like, cycles, right? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how would you embody momentum? Um, I think that I'm constantly moving forward but not in a straight line it's <laughs> usually in a, a zigzag. zigzag zigzag yes well you know what who says you have to be in a straight line and who you know who says you have to go slowly or like you know this is your momentum and you've been working for decades and i want to say thank you for teaching us all about your knowledge on how you became a triple threat performer and winning those accolades in New York and LA and then coming to Toronto and finding your your spot on set building your studio and then using all that knowledge to teach the next generation of performers what it means to embody being professional and then taking it to the stage or wherever it is so thank you so much for thank joining you. me on Momentum thank you so much and tune in next week I'll have another guest to talk about Momentum the drive, sustainability, and mindset of the creative high performer. Thank you. Bye.